Hello, and thank you for coming to my poster on how gene duplication, exon duplication, and the elaboration of splicing contributed to outlasting gene family evolution. I'm Maureen Stolzer, and this was work performed with my colleagues, Rujin Yang, Samantha Bryce, Tina Lee, and Danny Durand at Carnegie Mellon University. We know that gene families evolve on many levels, including the species level via speciation, gene level through gene duplication, loss, and transfer, on the subgene level through events acting on exons, such as exon duplication, insertion, or loss, and on the sequence level through substitution, indels, etc. Evolution on these first three levels, the species, genes, and subgene, can be modeled using trees, which can then be used to better understand a gene's history. In this work, we consider a case where these trees can elucidate the evolution of autoinhibition in the Atlastin gene family. Atlastins are found in the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, which is made up of a network of membrane tubules that undergo constant remodeling. Membrane fusion in the ER of metazoa is catalyzed by atlastin. When atlastins on neighboring membranes approach, they form a homozymer to initiate membrane fusion. Humans have three atlastin paralogs, while there is only one in fly. The core domains are conserved across all of these homologs. In human ATL1 and ATL2, Autoinhibition can inhibit membrane fusion. This autoinhibition is controlled by exons in the C-terminus. C-terminal autoinhibition likely acts as a regulatory mechanism that allows for rapid response to ER emergencies. Alternative splicing of C-terminal exons contributed to the evolution of autoinhibition. And at last in one, autoinhibition has been shown to be encoded by the final exon. In ATL2, there are two C-terminal exons which are alternatively spliced. One exon enables autoinhibition while the other does not. In both atlastin-3 and the atlastin and drosophila, there is no autoinhibition. Did the ancestral progenitor of the atlastin exhibit autoinhibition? In this work, we were interested in three main areas. First, what is the distribution of atlastin homologs across vertebrates and insects, and when did the gene duplication occur? This question can be answered by constructing a gene tree from the core region and reconciling that tree with the species tree to infer gene duplications and losses. Notown reconciliation indicates that there were two duplications at the face of the vertebrates leading to three paralogs. The ATL3 paralog was subsequently lost independently in both sharks and birds. Of note, the two homologs that encode autoinhibition, ATL1 and ATL2, are not sister taxa. There are three hypotheses that require only two events. Was autoinhibition an ancestral trait that was lost in ATL3 in insects? Or was it gained before du gene duplication in vertebrates, but lost in ATL3? Or was it gained after the gene duplication independently in both ATL1 and ATL2? To further understand these possibilities, we can look to see when the C-terminal exons that mediate autoinhibition erode. In this case, we can consider trees on three levels by including trees for the exons. For atlastins, we built a tree for the C-terminal exons and used a notung DM to reconcile the species, gene, and exon trees to infer events on three levels. Because the exon for atlastin-3 could not be unambiguously aligned, it was not considered here. Of note, while ATL2 has two term C-terminal exons, they do not group together in the exon tree. 
Rather, Notung infers that one exon was the result of a copy and insertion from ATL1. In summary, two rounds of gene duplication in the vertebrate ancestor led to three at last in paralogs. The C-terminal exon in ATL3 diverged further and truncated. And a second exon was gained in ATL2 through copy and paste of the exon in ATL1. So when did the auto-inhibition trait arise? Well, let's consider the trait here where the stripes indicate auto-inhibition and the silent bars don't exhibit this trait. Interestingly, the exon in ATL1 that was inserted into ATL2 exhibits autoinhibition, but the resulting exon in ATL2 does not. Rather, the exon that was vertically inherited does exhibit autoinhibition. If we look at the multiple sequence alignment for this exon, we can examine the residues required for autoinhibition as determined experimentally by our colleagues. While conserved within their respective orthologs, these residues do not align across the paralogs and likely do not share ancestral homology. Together, this indicates that autoinhibition was gained independently in ATL1 and ATL2. In addition, gain of autoinhibition in ATL1 likely occurred after a copy was inserted into ATL2, since the copy in ATL2 does not perform autoinhibition. In summary, this corresponds with Model 2, where autoinhibition was gained late independently in ATL1 and ATL2. In conclusion, in Atlastin's, gene duplication, exon shuffling, and acquisition of novel alternate splicing patterns contributed to Neo's functionalization. The spatial organization of the ATL2 exons alone is misleading. And reconciliation of species, gene, and exon trees suggests an exon insertion across paralogs rather than exon duplication within ATL2. Reconciliation combined with functional information further suggests independent neo-functionalization in ATL1 and ATL2. Site-directed mutagenesis combined with knowledge from the multiple sequence alignment supports this hypothesis. This is just one example where reconciliation across three levels is required to obtain a more accurate reconstruction.